Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Xiao Jing Zhao. Um, today I will talk about how to leverage uh, open source information to make effective adversarial attack and defense against deep learning model. Uh, before I start, I'd like to introduce who we are. We are uh, Northwest Security, a team of independent security researchers and data engineers. Um, uh, so right now we have five members from left to right. Uh, Chen Li, Yang Chuan, uh, Li Yang, Jiao Xiaojing, and Li Wei. Uh, so we have a uh, diverse backgrounds, but we do have a united interest, which is to apply AI techniques to solve security issues. Um, so we, uh, we, are, we have been fascinated by those ideas coming out of interaction between AI and uh, security. So we have been actively looking for the opportunities to learn more along that direction. And we also, we as a team, got invited for the CED CTF, uh, which is the first CTF uh, competition on adversaries, uh, attacks, and defenses. So uh, as a new team at attending the CTF for the first time, uh, we learn a lot from beginning of preparation to the end of competition. So um, today, this talk gonna meaning, uh, oh sorry, gonna mainly focus on sharing our learning from this event. So this uh, presentation gonna only include two parts. In the first part, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how do we evaluate open source attacks and de uh, defenses. Then in the second part, we're gonna introduce our design of the defense for the CTF. So uh, because uh, due to the limitation of the time and the resources, uh, we didn't try to develop our own method for the attacks and defense. So basically, our strategy is just uh, try to utilize or leverage the public available information or uh, open source code. So in order to select those methods, we have to define a criteria. So we define our criteria based on the requirement of the CTF. So uh, there are three, uh, three factors we are considering, uh, speed, transferability, and strength. Uh, for defense, because CTF had a, uh, has a hard requirement on how fast the image classifier has, uh, classifier has to run, so we put that one as a top one priority. So the requirement is two seconds per, ima per image. And, be and also because we have to, we only can submit one defense. So transferability is also very important. So we even uh, sacrifice our uh, strengths and to, uh, to enhance our transferability. And on the other side for the attack, because there's no limitation on what kind of attack we can use or how many, how many times we can attack. So basically, um, uh, we only consider the strengths of the methods. But actually, um, this strategy turned out is not that 100% correct. So because we just finished our CTF, look, uh, it's actually the speed for attack is also important because uh, we implement some strong attacks, but it take way long time, so we don't have the opportunity to try it. So basically, every time we, we each round, we only maybe just try maybe like one or two times, that's it. So next time, maybe we can improve on that. So the, we use heat target rate to uh, evaluate the strength of the method, which is a percentage of the images uh, being mis misclassified as target classes. Um, so keep those uh, criteria in mind. We start our, our evaluation. So basically the evaluation starts from uh, uh, building a baseline, basically. So we, we, doing, we do a benchmark of the base defense that attacks. So to do that, we use two uh, open source uh, libraries. Uh, for, for attack, we use Cleverhands, which is a Python library which are targeted, which actually build to benchmark the machine learning system against uh, adversarial attacks. So it's basically a collection of different adversarial attack methods. And uh, for defense, um, we uh, actually uh, Google uh, provided those uh, pre-trained uh, weights, actually, and, and uh, even, uh, they, they even provide those adversarial trained models. So what that means is those model is trained by uh, both original image and also some adversarial images. 
Um, let me see. So there are, uh, actually there are two popular uh, architectures. One is the Inception V3 and another is the Inception ResNet V2. So uh, in order to do the evaluation, we have to use some test data set. So basically the test data set we are using is provided by CAD, which uh, include a thousand fresh images, uh, classified into thousand classes with image net labels. Uh, if you look at the right hand side, that uh, distribution, uh, uh, target class versus true label. You can see the width of the distribution along along the x direction is very consistent. So that means uh, those target class is random, uniformly run, uh, uniformly selected from zero to thousand. So which means um, this is an average case of a scenario. So what that means is if we use this, this data set to evaluate our method that's going to give us the uh, average estimation of this method. It's not the best case and not the worst case, it's just average. So um, by using those two uh, libraries, we, we start our evaluation. So this table shows a um, hit target rate of four attacks against three defenses. So all four attacks use the uh, exact same gradient-based method, which is a basic iterative method, BIM. The difference is the first three, the different is uh, the, the different model has been used to calculate the gradient. So basically the attack is calculated based on the gradient. But those, uh, those three attacks use different models. Actually they are corresponding to those three defenses. So basically the, the model in 7v3 and also the adversarial training in 7v3 and ensemble adversarial training uh, in several resident v2 has been used to calculate the gradient. So basically, we can say for each column, for each defense, we are doing a white, bo white box attack. So we can say the white box attack is very effective, actually. Um, for example, for the first one, BIM, based on inception model, we can have uh, like 89% hit target rate. Um, but uh, even, even for the second one and the third one, the second row and the third row, those two, uh, those two, uh, oh, sorry, the second column and third column, those two defenses, those two defenses have been adversarially trained. Even, 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 even for that model, it's still vulnerable to the white, white, white box attack. We can still have a very high, like 75% and 85% hit target rates. So, but we can also say, even though the white box attack is very uh, strong, but the transferability is very bad. So basically, it only works for that model. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at the first row, mm -hmm. even only works for in 7v3, mm -hmm. but for another two defenses, the hit target risk is zero. So it's totally, it doesn't work. But we can improve that by doing some assembling. So basically, the last attack ensembles three different models together. So the basic idea is we calculate three different adversarial images based on three models. Then we just calculate the average and use that average image as, a, as our final attack. So for, by doing that, you can see we can, keep, we can still keep a high hit target rate but also improve the transferability. So basically it, it works for all, all three defense. So that's just a, because, um, oh, I forgot to mention, so because uh, those two labels are uh, publicly available, so basically we, we treat those, when we analyze those performance, we just treat like those like a lower boundary. So basically if we pick the attack or defense, it has to, it must be better than, than, than those methods. Um, so now, then um, we try, we also try some uh, strong defense, like uh, guided denoise, um, the, the, actually the author is sitting in the audience um, and also the random padding so both of them uh, actually the first and the second place in the 2017 NIPS at uh, Ocera defense competition so you can see those two defense are very strong so basically for those four attacks they just the hit target rate is zero so it's just totally not working um, but for us, our strategy for attack selection is basically just make sure we have a corresponding attack for each single defense we can find. So because there's no limitation on how many times we can try, so basically we build a set of, a broad set of attacks for this CTF 
computation. Um, so this diagram is a polar plot, which is a polar plot of a heat target rate. So basically, different colors stand for different attacks, and six different defense is located on six different uh, angular position. So from this, this is a, like a needle-like branch. So this needle-like branch pattern actually can tell us two kinds of info. One is the, the length of the branch, which is the value of the heat target rate, so which actually is the strength of the attack. And the, the number of branch, which actually tells us how good the transferability of this method is. Because the more branch we have, which means this single method can, can attack more defenses. So basically, in, uh, uh, through all our evaluation, we use this, this plot to evaluate all the methods, just trying to get a balance between the transferability and the uh, defense. So those three methods we, we implemented. So for guided denoise, we kind of we kind of like because they are they open source everything. So kind of we, we just implement a white white box attack. So actually it's very effective. We can get like a 98% hit target rate. And for another two kinds of defense like a random padding, basically they randomly adding some paddings onto the input image because they try to utilize the transfer environment feature of the. CN based image classifier. So basically, for our original image, if you add, add a random stuff on it, it won't affect the classification results. But we, if we input a fake image or adversarial image, when you add some random stuff on, onto it, it's going to strongly degrade the, the influence of that attack. So that's the idea of the random padding. So we also implant some, um, adopt some method to implant. Uh, targeted attack for that. Um, so now I, uh, I will talk about some strategies we uh, applied in both defense attack. So basically for the first role for defense, it's called, uh, it's very popular one, it's called ensemble adversarial training. So basically even, uh, we not only just train the model with both original image and adversarial image, we also try to generate those adversarial image from, from, from several different methods. So we tried, by doing that, by doing this ensemble adversarial training, you can, you can strongly, you can effectively improve the transferability of your defense. But on the other hand, for the attack, you can also in, uh, apply ensemble adversarial attacking, which also can improve the transferability of your attack method. So basically, same idea, you can, you can apply for both defense and attack. Another idea is um, for defense is a greedy masking. So basically, uh, uh, right now for those um, those popular attacks, most of the popular attacks is uh, greedy based. So basically, which means you have to get the you have to somehow you have to get a greedy of that uh, target model. Then based on the greedy, you can cal you can generate your attacks. But this greedy mask is tr just trying to hide those greedy info. So you they can. Uh, uh, they can just make gradient unsmoothed, so which means it's kind of like stepwise. Or they can, they can just make the gradient vanish, totally become very small or very large, it's exploding. So basically when you get those info, it's, it, it's just guide, guide your calculation to a wrong direction. Basically, by doing that, they can achieve the defensive purpose. Um, but um, still, on, on the attack side, researchers still also propose some corresponding attack, attacking strategies. Basically, if you make a step, stepwise a gradient, basically you generate a lot of a local, local minimum. So then the, when the attack try to escape from those local minimum, they, they just, they can, there's one way they can do it, they can just add a random perturbation each time onto that uh, calculation. So basically when you, when you start into a, some, some Local, local spot, and then you just randomly jump, jump it out. That's just the idea. That's the idea of a random perturbation. And also, some, some attacks, they, they use a gradient smoothing. So basically, when you calculate, the, the, when they get a gradient info, they apply a Gaussian, Gaussian smoothing and smooth that gradient out. So everything is perfect for the attack, again. Uh, a third new method is called a uh, backward pass differentiable approximation. So basically, it's uh, approximate. So basically, this method is just we cannot get the the real grid, uh, real gradient from that network. Then we can, then somehow we can approximately calculate one. 
So basically, that, that's their idea. So we don't, we don't use uh, the target to calculate gradient. We just somehow come out an idea, get a close one, then use that one as our gradient, then achieve the, the, the attack. Uh, the third strategy for defense, uh, so basically the gradient, the adversarial attack, which is, a, is because of the adversarial, adversarial noise. So it, it is a noise. So very, very natural solution for the noise is just do a filtering, just get rid of noise. So that's the, third, the, the basic idea of the third one, which is we just use some image processing method, just, just filter those noise out. But still, from attack side, people still figure out how to attack this kind of defense. So basically, what you are doing in the defense side, I just doing the same thing on the attack side. When I calculate the attack, we just improve those filtering or anything inside it. So when, when, when I calculate the attack, it's going to take into account everything. So that's the idea. So actually, we use this, uh, we use this method to uh, achieve the attack against the random padding. So basically, we, when we calculate the uh, attacking adversary image, we also add the random padding into an iterative calculation. Then the last one, um, I think that's the only one there is no effect attack message, a method, so which is a de detection only method. So basically, uh, it's not uh, enhance the, the, robust, the robustness of the system. It's just add on another module to attack if there is an adversary attack happening or not. If it's happening, we just give an alert or we just, just return some random stuff. So that, that's the idea of a detection. Um, so that's all about the evaluation. So based on the, so we do a, we do a very extensive uh, evaluation uh, of a lot of attacks and defenses. Uh, then based on those learning, we uh, came out the, this design of our defense. So basically, this defense uh, include two modules. The first one, uh, the left hand side, the, that big, big uh, rectangle, uh, which actually is uh, our image classifier. But this image classifier includes two image classifier. So basically, we parallel align those two image uh, classifier together. Then we put a d difference filter at the end. So basically what is happening is when there is an adversary image coming, it's going to get classified by both of those two classifiers. One is the CV2 plus random padding. Another is a guided denoise. So then there's, there are two labels output from those two classifiers and how going to get fit into that difference filter. So basically we're going to compare. If those two agree with each other, then we think uh, uh, that's uh, the attack field. Basically, we, uh, we we get the true label. But if they are uh, like they don't agree with each other or contradict with each other, then we just simply return a zero or random number. So that's the idea of the first module. Um, so I want to spend a little bit time on that uh, CV2 filter. So. So basically, uh, CV2 is the name of the OpenCV package in Python. So basically, um, it's, it, this is also an image processing idea. Because when, when we are doing, uh, we, we read a lot of codes, they are doing a lot of, they, 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 they're doing the image processing through a, diff, a lot of different ways. But then we think, why, we just, why don't we just use a professional package just doing the image processing? So Open, OpenCV is a very famous open source library. They are just doing the image set, image processing. So they provide a lot of sophisticated functions. So basically, use, and also it's, it's implemented by, by C, so it's very fast and very easy to use. Basically, you can just use the function, just add one line, even just as simple as one line code, just add that filter in any existing defenses. So right now, we're, what we are using is called bilateral filtering, so which is an edge-preserving, um, noise-reducing, smoothing filter. So basically, what it's doing is this. Actually, those four images already show the effect. So the, the left left up corner, the first one is an original adversarial image. Then, if you, if you go through those filters three times, at the last one, the bottom right, that one, 
you can see that on those filing, filing pattern on the background, those actually is the adversarial partition, partition try, to, try to confuse the classify. So basically, by going through all those fil filters, those noise is smoothed out, but at the same time, the edge is still preserved. And because we know for those image classifier, um, they kind of like, they, they try to learn those edges. So if, if you can maintain those edges, which means this matter won't affect your uh, classification uh, accuracy. So uh, to uh, prove that, uh, we apply this um, CV2 filter onto the uh, guided denoise uh, defense and use it against three different uh, attacks. So this time, those color pattern stands for defense. And the, the left up corner, that one is what we implement a white bot attacks against this guided denoise method. So you can see the yellow one, which is the one we use CV2 in onto the, uh, this uh, guided denoise method. It can effectively reduce the pay target rate from 96% down to like 50, uh, 45%. So our, mes our method is, uh, this CV2 filter is, is actually the effective method. And also the reason why we put another two defenses, <coughs> another two attacks on the, on the on another side, is just try to see if this CV2 filter gonna degrade your transferability. But it's turned out it's not, it's not it's, it doesn't do that. So we think, we believe this CV2 filter is a, a very effective uh, way to at least enhance your defense because it's very fast and it's, it's also very flexible. You can, uh, you can apply it to any existing system. So that's about the first module. So the first module, the, the successful defense, defense using the first module relying on our assumption, which is there's no attack which is strong enough to fool or confuse both of them. But that's not true actually. Even, even we know that's not true because when we do, a, when we do the testing, there are some uh, attacks which can fool both of the CV2 plus random pending and also the guide denoise. So basically, both of them gonna output the, the exactly same label, but that label is wrong. So which means the first module gonna fail if, if that happens. So that's, that's where the second module come, come into play, which is a keyming filter. Um, so, this keyming filter is based on a machine learning method called keyming clustering. Um, so the assumption here is this keyming clustering algorithm is robust against a neural network based adversarial attack. So in order to uh, verify that, we conduct a very little, a little experiment. So this is an experiment. So basically what, what I'm doing is um, there is a thousand original image. Then we generate another thousand adversarial images. Then, they, then we put both those two thousand images into this keyming keyming clustering. So this keyming clustering gonna uh, cl gonna put put uh, gonna automatically classify those images into different classes. Then we compare each orange image class against that adversarial version. Then we found that the, actually 95% of them are matched. So which means those adversarial attack doesn't affect the accuracy of the keyming clustering. So we can trust this method. Then based on that method, uh, I'm gonna talk about how we uh, implement this keyming filter. So basically, um, the first one, the top one is, is describe how we generate a mapping because uh, uh, this, uh, all the, all this competition is based on the ImageNet data set. So ImageNet has like thousand labels. But when we do the keyming clustering, it's impossible for us to do like thousand, thousand, cl thousand clusters. So basically, uh, our keyming is trained to classify the image into 10, 10 classes. So how can you uh, map uh, a thousand, thousand, thousand different labels into a 10 different classes? So that's that's how we that's how how we do it. Basically, we after we train our keyming clustering cluster, we use another test data set. So that test set is gonna go inside into the uh, keyming clustering. 
we know those true label, those image net label of those test class set. Then after we classify those image with k-min cluster, we also know the k-min classes. So that's going to generate a map, a map, just basically the table. So we know which, which class is going to correspond to which image net labels. So after that uh, mapping label is ready, uh, we start to uh, finalize our logic. So basically, it's very simple. So uh, when an uh, adversary image comes in, uh, first it's going to go through the first module I just discussed. Then it's going to generate a label, by which, which is an image net label. Then that image net label is going to convert to a k-min label by, by using that uh, mapping table we just generated. So which it's basically is just a 10 elements list, because we the k-min, we only have 10 k-min classes. So this, those 10 elements actually is, is ordered by probability. So, so the, for example, the first list, which means we think this label is uh, most likely in class nine, but least likely in class four. Then at the same time, this attack image also gonna directly fit into the uh, the Kimmy cluster. So Kimmy cluster gonna generate another list. So it's also a 10 elements list. But for this list, the Kimmy think, the Kimmy thinks uh, the most likely this image is, li is, in, is uh, in class two, but least likely in class nine. So these two lists actually, they, they contradict to each other. They, they don't agree. So that's when we think, oh, this filter think, this attack actually su succeed because they are contradicted. So then they're going to just output a zero or random number. Only, only when those two lists match or, or, some, uh, or pass some checking, checking logic we set, it's going to let the, the original label come through. So that's the idea of the keyming filter. So um, that's all about uh, the design of our final uh, submission for the defense. So this is uh, just a, a quick sh uh, just a same polar plot showing the heat target rate of our defense against uh, some strong attacks. So you can see for all six attacks, the uh, heat target rate is uh, close to zero. So we believe um, our defense is effective and also has, uh, has a good transferability. Uh, but uh, it's turned out uh, it's not. <laughs> uh, we still lost uh, some, some points. So I think um, I think for the Kimming field, Kimming, uh module, there's still a, a lot of improved space. So that might be a, a direction we, we try to improve. So uh, in summary, uh, I talk about how we select a set of attacks aiming, uh, aiming different defense. And also I, I talk about the defense comprised of image processing, classify difference filter, and a keyming filter. Uh, with that, I'm going to finish my talk. Uh, any questions? Yes. You mean, is that a random or not? Uh, yes. Yes. So we are. We are. Yes. That's the. Uh, that's the main, main main way to achieve the attack. And then the next question: Are there any types of targeted attacks to try and manipulate actual portions of the image, uh, like to distort, keep the image but distort it, or elongate it or shrink it, change the dimension? You mean the attack method? Yes. Actually, um. So so the attack actually is a. Uh, uh, mathematically, it's, it's actually it's just solving an optimization problem. So it totally depends on how do you how do you define your problem. So there are some attacks they can just only adjust one pixel. It's, it's still it still uh, achieves the, their purpose to change the classification. And also they have some some researcher proposed some uh, adversarial pa patch. So basically it's just a, a pattern a patch. When you put that patch on, onto anything. The image classifier gonna misclassify that image. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can yes uh, by define by define your problem, you can control where 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 you put those noise. Even though they are noise, but you can still control 
where where you apply it to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's easy to understand from an image perspective how the attacks and, and defenses work. Yes. How can you translate those same concepts to, let's say, a piece of malware that you're trying to process through AI or ML to classify whether it's benign or malicious? How how would we say, okay, this is this is how we modify the, the piece of malware with noise or mm -hmm. adding, so mm -hmm. we process it through through the AI? Is it literally the same way that you would? Modify okay. the image to be able to uh, tamper with the algorithm. Okay, so your question is just ask if the same same method can be applied to a different other AI applications besides. Right. Is it literally the same way, or, or is um, it a completely different methodology? I think um, fundamentally they are same. So it's it's still another kind of uh, optimization optimization problem. You just try to solve that optimization problem, but in practical, when you're doing attack against some other stuff, even though it's not that far away, like I'm doing the same uh, attack against an image classifier, but in, in in real, in the real world, there there are more there are a lot of factor has 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 to be taken into account. So, for example, there's some re some research about the so right now what I'm what I'm talking about is totally in the digital domain. So basically everything is achieved in the computer. But if you want to achieve a physical domain, like you, you just put something on the wall, or on the, like, uh, on the washing machine, the washing machine is going to misclassify as a dryer or something. For that, you have to take into account like, uh, the light, the, the, the wheel angle, all those factors have to be taken into place. So basically it makes the problem more complicated. But fun I think fundamentally they're the same. Yes. Yeah, that actually, that's a that's a very good point. So, yeah, that's why we. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways to apply the same idea. So basically, it's basically what what we are trying to do is we try to get rid of the the bad noise, which is adversarial noise, but still keep the valid information for the classifier. Because you cannot just totally get rid of everything, so that's gonna also going to mess up your classifier. It's on, actually, even for the CV2 filter, I didn't show here, but if, you, if the parameter didn't set correctly, the accuracy of the classifier is going to strongly degrade. Yeah. So basically, yeah, that, actually that's a good point. Uh, for if we can try to do something in the frequent dom frequent domain, that, actually that's one of our yeah, team so team yeah team mem team member yes 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 actually that's that's one of our team member. He's trying to work on that direction. We basically is, uh, is not doing the f uh, image filtering. It, we're we're trying to look at the frequent domain to tell if it, if it's a real image or not. So that's that's uh, that's that's our idea. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, otherwise, they're smoothing with windows. You slice with both windows across the image. Yes, yes, that's another way. Like yeah, and also because um, what, uh, even though you carefully set up your filtering algorithm, it's still going to affect the classified accuracy. So basically, I, I read some paper. Basically, the researcher is doing is they, they use another set of a neural network, just try to calculate uh, something called a class activation region. So basically, when the classifier look at the image, there is an interest region or those not interest region. So basically, that net unit network just try to figure out which region is more more important, gonna affect the final classification for that classifier. Then, when we know that region, when we apply the image filter for the attack, we don't touch that region. We just uh, filter everything else out. Yeah, that's that's uh, the idea. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's gonna be slow. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have one more. Oh. Nobody's gonna ask. I have one more question. Okay. <clears throat> so you 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 talked about processing the different images through different filters to increase the accuracy, right? Yes. One, one of the things that you mentioned was comparing adversarial versus original images to kind of you know have a have a baseline that, that you can use to 
you know, understand, right? Yeah. So does, does the accuracy improve the more um, images you, you feed into, into your data set? Or is there a certain point that it doesn't matter how many images you throw at your, at your data set, the, the accuracy just peaks? Uh, so I think that depends. So it depends uh, what kind of uh, uh, algorithm you are using. So for example, if you are, um, so when, if, if you, when you train that classifier, if you take into account both, like pure original image or some image after filtering. So when you train that model, you already take into account that factor. So then when you do the image filter later, it won't affect that classify. But if you, if you try to, when you feed more image, I don't know, I, I'm not sure I fully understand it, but you, you mean you, if you feed a lot of image, I think you're talking about training, right? Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for training, yeah, we can, so that's actually, that's the one, um, that's the, the key point of the, uh, the adversarial training. So basically, the adversarial training is mixed of the original image and adversarial image. But we can also do a mix of original image and some image after image filter, right? So by doing that, we, we, treat, uh, we train that classifier. That classifier is going to learn, okay, so some image is original image, but some image is after some filtering. But I can, I can still identify their same. So that's kind of like how you, how you build your uh, well, training, training data set. Well, let's say you had unlimited time and unlimited resources does the accuracy continue to improve the more you, you feed, or is there a certain point where it just peaks no matter how much more time you spend training? Um, I think it, that's, that's limited by the, the neural network. It's not limited by the image filtering. So basically, I think it's going to reach a peak. I don't think you can just keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, thanks.